Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining why your barrel length should affect your decision to carry specific types of defensive ammunition. So when trying to find a new ammo to carry, most people will go online, find a ballistic gelatin test, and then once they've confirmed that the uh, bullet performs well, they're going to go out, buy that cartridge, and throw it in their concealed carry firearm. Now normally that's okay, but one thing you need to consider is your barrel length. Uh, most of those tests are conducted with a full length barrel, which therefore results in a higher velocity of that projectile. And a lot of modern projectiles, especially hollow points and JHPs, depend on that velocity to perform well. So what we've got here is a ballistic gelatin test today to help prove that point. So what we have is the Liberty Civil Defense Line in 38 Special and 357 Magnum. And we chose these two because we can fire them out of the same firearm. And if you look closely, they both have the same exact projectile. They're 50 grain projectiles. The only difference here is velocity. That 38 Special is advertised at 1500 feet per second. And that 357 Magnum is advertised at 2100 feet per second. So what we've done is we've taken this snub nose revolver here with a two inch barrel, the Smith & Wesson model 640, and we're gonna fire it into some ballistic gelatin to see how that loss in velocity due to that short barrel affects the performance. Now another reason why we chose these two types of ammunition here is because we've already tested the Liberty Civil Defense 9mm and we've proven that with a full length barrel, this ammunition performs just as designed. So let's get out to the range, uh, fire a few shots and see what our results are. All right, folks, so let's take a look at the 357 Magnum. It entered the gel, came out to the two inch mark and started uh, fragmenting just as designed. At the four inch mark, we have a two inch permanent cavity. Now that indicates a very large transfer of kinetic energy. Now from that four inch mark all the way out to the seven inch mark here, uh, we have fragmentation. It's not as clean as the nine millimeter fragmentation. Um, with that video, because of that longer barrel, we got a very clean separation of the base and the uh, bullet fragments we had nine and it was a very nice starburst pattern with this uh, it seems that some of the pieces actually stuck together uh, one of them here actually I don't know if you can see that but it seems that they've stuck together and that's probably due to loss of velocity from that uh, smaller barrel now from here the base continued all the way out here to that 12 inch mark now that's uh, the minimum FBI standard but it did reach it so um, you know, that is something to consider. The bullet actually came towards the camera just a little bit, about a half inch, so it did not come in straight through the gel. Next up, let's check out that 38 Special. This is going to be traveling even slower than the 357, so let's see how it performed. So that 38 Special came into the ballistics gelatin, and at the one inch mark, we start to see a performance very similar to a full metal jacket. From the one inch mark all the way out to that nine inch mark, we can see the spiraling of the bullet and that kinetic energy transfer which created a 0.75 inch permanent cavity. That's the maximum diameter here at the six inch mark. Down at that nine inch mark again, we see a complete loss in the diameter of the permanent cavity. And in case you don't know this, a uh, fun little fact here, if you're looking at a ballistics gelatin result and you see a complete loss in permanent cavity diameter, that's probably due to the bullet being completely intact and inverting itself. So if we look a little bit farther into the ballistics gelatin, Bingo, we see the bullet completely intact and completely inverted. Uh, so we have 13 inches of total penetration and a performance much like an FMJ. Now before you guys start freaking out and saying, whoa, Liberty Ammo sucks, this would occur with any defensive ammunition that fragments or expands if you use a short barrel. We did this on purpose because we've proven that this ammunition works very well with a full length barrel. And I wanna show you guys that it's very important to go out, find a ballistic skeleton test with the correct length barrel and the ammo you want to see if you're gonna have reliable results. You might have also noticed our ballistic skeleton is getting pretty yellow and that's because we're saving up for a new block. Uh, give me some time on that, it's very expensive. It really helps us out if you guys share the videos on Facebook, that'll uh, make us a little bit of money, we can get blocks out here faster. And feel free to send ammunition that you wanna see tested. We've had a lot of uh, users do that. It's really helped out the project and it's really helped out everyone. So thanks for watching today guys, I hope you learned a lot about um, your ammunition and how barrel length affects your bullet's performance.